Hey guys, today is a good day because I finally got a new NAS system to store all my media for my projects. Ever since my shitty MyCloud broke down and I had to rescue the data, my hard drives on two computers have been completely full, making me unable to record and edit new videos. It came to a point where I literally couldn't download the footage for a new project from a cloud drive and offsetting the data to normal hard drives would just scatter everything around and I'd be going back to plugging USB cables like a caveman. That's why I decided to get a new NAS system and more specifically the QNAP TS453D. In this video I will show you the first steps of setting it up so you can follow along and see what it's like. I will make a more detailed review in a year or so when I can actually tell you if everything works like it's supposed to and if the investment was worth it. While I'm getting everything out of the box let me tell you why I chose this specific model. I've been thinking a long time about which NAS I should buy because I need something of a certain build quality that actually lasts for a few years and has multiple bays so I can set up a RAID system. With that in mind, I had to decide between a 2-bay and a 4-bay NAS and of course which brand I would buy it from. 6 or 8-bays were just out of my budget because I also had to get new hard drives as well. For me it was mainly a decision between Synology and QNAP as their products seemed to fit my requirements while also being almost affordable. My first thought was to get a decent 2-bay NAS. But luckily my research took so long that I could manage to save up a bit more and decided to go for a more long term solution, a 4-bay NAS. The good thing with 4 bays is that this category has the biggest product range between different manufacturers so you can find exactly the type of NAS that suits your need. I made a spreadsheet to compare them and initially leaned towards the Synology range but then I came across an incredible offer for this device and learned that QNAP systems are more customizable and can be tailored to your needs. So I finally decided to give it a go. For the hard drives I used two Seagate Iron Wolves with 4TB each. At the time when I bought them 4TB had the best storage to cost ratio and I needed to get at least two drives. Bigger ones were too expensive and smaller ones would have taken up too much physical space for their capacity. Also, I didn't want to cut corners on the hard drives by getting cheap no-names or standard computer drives to fill up those spaces as they are not optimized for NAS operation and that's why I bought two good quality NAS drives. Like this, I have a very good starting point and I can still upgrade my storage later on. Installing the hard drives is pretty easy. You just open up the trays by pushing on the button on the top and you can take them out. You then install the hard drives with the SATA connection facing backwards and connect the clips on the sides that will lock onto the standardized holes and keep the hard drives in place. After that, I simply insert the trays in the NAS case and gently push them into the connectors in the back until I hear a click in the casing. I put the empty trays back in as well, close the front panel and the NAS is ready to go. Once the NAS is connected to both the power supply and my network, I download QFinder Pro from the QNAP website. To do this, I head over to Support and PC or Mac Utilities. QFinder is the first thing that pops up and you can't really miss it. I had the problem that my operating system is too old to run the latest version of QFinder Pro, so I had to head over to the download center, select the specifications of my NAS and then find the next version of QFinder that is compatible with my Mac. You can simply just download it and your Mac or PC will check for compatibility. Once QFinder is opened up and the NAS is running, it will automatically detect a server that is not initialized yet. I click yes to start the smart installation guide. The first thing they want you to do is to check your warranty and if you want to, you can extend it to 5 years for an extra $99. I'll skip this for now and start the installation. First, we need to check for updates and select the latest firmware. After that, I can give the NAS a name and set an admin password, then select the time zone. For now, I select automatic IPs, but I might change that later on. The next step is more important. I specifically want to use the NAS as a central server for Mac, Windows and Linux because I use all of these systems in different ways, so I need to check this box in order to make the file transfer smoother. I hit apply settings and wait a few minutes for the NAS to initialize. After that's done, I can finally log in for the first time and instantly get bombarded with loads of pop-ups and messages. I close them all and deal with that later, because first I want to change the language to English. I check if both drives are active and head over to storage and create a new storage pool. A storage pool pulls all the selected drives together into one group and manages them according to the RAID type you specify. Depending on how many drives you combine in the pool, you can use different types of RAID configurations. 
In this case I have two disks and my first two options are JBOD or RAID 0, which both will combine the disks so that I can use the maximum storage space, but it does not include any data protection by redundancy. This leaves me with RAID 1, which lets me use half of the maximum capacity as the data is written on both disks at the same time. This is not the most efficient RAID setup, but for now it's my best option. In the future, my plan is to upgrade to 4 disks and a RAID 5 configuration. When creating a new storage pool, the selected drives will be formatted for a clean start. It is technically possible to create multiple storage pools, but I don't have any use for that and it would limit my RAID capabilities. When the storage pool is ready to use, we can create volumes on it. If you just want one big storage space to throw your data in, select the thick volume and max out the storage pool space. In my case though, I want to create multiple volumes for different purposes, such as music, videos and accounting, and thin volumes allow me to change the space allocations over time according to my use. I set the first volume to 100 GB and leave the other options on default. To make use of this new volume, I create a shared folder with automatic paths and no encryptions. I don't worry about the other options and hit create. After a few seconds, it shows up on the top left in FileStation 5. For the next step, I jump back into QFinder and right click on my NAS to select network drives. I log in with my credentials and use the standard protocol and tick the box to add the mounted volumes to favorite in the Mac Finder. After a few seconds it shows up in the Mac Finder and I'm ready to store something on it. Lately I got into digital art and I heard that NFTs are worth quite a bit of money, so this is the perfect opportunity to steal some pocket money from the internet. With my superior hacking skill I circumvent the copyright protection of this incredible buzzword technology and somehow managed to get a picture of an ape with a funny hat. Art theft is kind of exhausting though and with all this internet money now safely stored on my NAS I can finally do something that I've been looking forward to ever since I got the NAS. That's right, this thing actually has a shutdown button and the possibility to schedule its operating times, which is quite a leap forward from my old NAS. If you're interested in what I'm talking about, check out the video I link up here. I'm really looking forward to working with this new machine and I hope it will be the game changer that I need for my data storage. If you made it to here, I'd like to thank you for your attention and ask you to like, subscribe and hit that bell so you get notified when a new video is being released. As I said, in about a year I plan to release an in-depth review about this NAS. But until then, there's a whole lot of other interesting projects to explore. I wish you all the best and I see you in the next video. Bye!